Good morning, folks. We've got an active region on the sun, weather notes, the official solar forecast of the world's top solar group, gamma bursts, and more starting at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last 24 hours on our star was mostly quiet. The darkness of the departing coronal holes is fading and only scantly covers small patches on the visible disk. There is a slight rise to the X-ray production on the sun due to an active region crackling on the south. Interestingly, this little guy is lost. He's a remnant of the last solar cycle here at such latitude. Solar wind has calmed down considerably as plasma density is falling off amidst sustained moderate stream speed, geomagnetic conditions taking advantage of the lower density, and are returning to calm. Alert coming tonight for the U.S. and Canada. Unlike many days, it's not one system. It's the convergence off the northern low, the reemergence of the line as it crosses the Great Lakes, and then a strong cell is going to take off from the Rockies into the central states. Eyes on all of these. Meanwhile, the flash flooding hit Turkey hard and fast, multiple injuries and at least four reported dead in the deluge. Speaking of weather, let's get the June climate report for the globe. Looking at the land only, we see patches of hot and cold, and when we further add on the temperature over the water, we see hot is more abundant, but not in the East Pacific, where La Nina is kicking in for the second half of the year. And of course, on the map, they're going to show the rest of the world they make La Nina, and most of the rest of the blue just disappear. Just don't be fooled yourself. And lastly, folks, it's no secret why Japan and China have major flood issues right now. It was one of the rainiest months in June they've ever seen. And it's continued here in July. Up next, folks, the three official solar cycle forecasts from Silso. I'm running them on repeat here. It is just the three. What's important is that they pretty much all agree that the sun is about to wake back up. The solar polar magnetic fields indicate its time. We've seen a number of active regions already this year, and so end of this year or next, expect the return of big solar flares. Last but not least, folks, that little patch of light is the second furthest short gamma burst ever located, and the furthest with an optical counterpart. They believe these are triggered when two stars merge, but alas, it is largely guesswork. This article still clings to the concept that the resulting cosmic jet of the merger has to be pointed at us so we can see the event, but we have seen numerous papers recently describing the gamma emission from the jet itself, not from the emanation point, and so this, a nice thought, but just a half step up from a shot in the dark. Last but not least, folks, hoping to get you out a special video tonight. Harvard astrophysicist taking on one of the core clues that our sun has a micronova, taking on the task of trying to debunk it. Tonight, hopefully, or tomorrow, Ben takes on him. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.